Okay, so this video is going to be less about the Habs, but more about the Lightning. Now, I know we have Canadians fans on this channel, but believe me, you're gonna stick around, you're gonna watch, you're gonna listen to this one, because I think the message that I kind of want to send out there for the 2021 Tampa Bay Lightning and their overall process, everything that it took to get here, I highly recommend you stick around because I do want to get over some things that I know everybody has been kind of memeing around about when it comes to this Tampa Bay squad. So, the biggest thing that everybody is talking about right here is the Tampa Bay Lightning and the Cap Circumvention. I know we already made our video a final word on the cap, and I kind of swore to myself that it was going to be the last time we talked about it. But now that this team is in the finals, again, now that this team is exercising their demons, and I'm going to get to that a little bit later, it does bring up a few concerns to many of the Canadians fans that I've seen. And don't worry, it's not all of them. The majority of them are actually really confident in their abilities heading into this final series. Now, whether or not that's deserved, undeserved, whatever, that's your call. But for the Tampa Bay Lightning, the biggest thing is the salary cap. Everybody likes to meme, okay, they're $18 million over the salary cap. If you go to Cap Friendly, take a look at their overall page here. The upper cap limit for the 2021 NHL season was $81.5 million. The Tampa Bay Lightning salary cap hit was $98.8 million, meaning that they were $17.3 million over the cap. It's $18 million. However, the number is a little bit misleading because the final cap hit measures like the ones shown in this graphic include players who are on the LTIR like Marion Gabrick, like Anders Nielsen. They actually would technically only be about $9 million over the cap if you got rid of those guys who, I mean, they shouldn't even really be counting on the cap anyway because they're LTIR. So very technically, it's only about $9 million over the cap, which is Nikita Kucherov's overall salary. And you can kind of see where the mathematics plays into that. This is a team that has really taken themselves out there, sent Nikita Kucherov to take a surgery, and aligned the timeline of the surgery so that he would recover, quote-unquote, fully recover, by the time the playoffs started. He would be ready for Game 1, and that's exactly what happened. Boom, take a look at where things are right now. Nikita Kucherov is an absolute monster. 27 points in the playoffs this year. It's unmatched. And I know, the biggest thing that everybody likes to say, oh, they're cheating, they this, they that, even if that may be true, there is no use in complaining about it now. It's happened, they're going through with it, the league has allowed it, there's nothing in the rulebook saying that they're not allowed to do that. If anything, Julian Brisebois is an absolute genius for going out there and exploiting the system the way he has. Obviously, I've made my videos about it before, but the biggest problem in this whole situation is that it seems... Not saying it is, but it seems like the Lightning just said, okay, Kucherov, this surgery takes X amount of months for you to recover from. Take it right before the season starts so that you'll be out the entire year. And it doesn't even really feel like he was out the entire year because he was practicing with the team like a few weeks before everything was settled down and he made his return, allowing the team to acquire David Savard, all these other players... All of a sudden, once the playoff starts and everybody is activated, boom, $98.8 million cap hit, as it would have been in the regular season, but because there's no cap in the playoffs, okay, it's fine, the cap hit is zero. Now, I will say, it's not even just Tampa Bay that did this. The New York Islanders were also over the cap. This is the graphic at the end of the season, $88.4 million. Now, this was kind of in a similar territory, because the Islanders lost out on Anders Lee, but Anders Lee didn't end up playing an entire game in the postseason. Had he done it, though, had Lee actually played, though, he would have been out there with his $7 million, I'd say, ghost price tag, because it's not actually a real one. There is no cap in the playoffs. But the Islanders were in a very similar boat, so it's not like the Tampa Bay Lightning were exclusive in this regard, paying guys over the salary cap. However, you gotta remember that the Tampa Bay Lightning are honestly kind of the team that had the most to lose from this kind of system. Because remember what happened in 2015? In 2015, Patrick Kane for the Chicago Blackhawks, he was a point per game at the time of this moment. He was taken out for the rest of the season with an injury against the Florida Panthers where Alex Petrovic hit him into the boards. Darn. Sucks. Patrick Kane was making $6.5 million that year, and he was sidelined for 12 weeks until the end of the regular season. He didn't play another game. 
literally just like three days after that, the Chicago Blackhawks went out there and they were like, okay, we lost our best player. That sucks. But now we have ourselves an LTIR cap hit that is about $6.3 million richer, which gives us an opportunity to start making some trades. Literally in the next three days, the Chicago Blackhawks acquired Kimo Timonen. $2 million right there. A bit after that, they traded with the Arizona Coyotes. They acquired Antoine Vermette, $3.75 million. And then they traded for Andrew Desjardins, 700000 right there. That is Patrick Kane's full cap hit, acquired for and added onto the team while Patrick Kane was on the LTIR. And guess what? The playoffs come back. Patrick Kane, he's all good. Because there's no salary cap in the playoffs, boom, he is back in here. And he had 23 points in 23 games. Guess who the Blackhawks defeated in the finals? The Tampa Bay Lightning. If there's a team out there that has been screwed over by the cap circumvention hocus pocus in the past, it is the Tampa Bay Lightning who faced off against the circumventing team back in 2015. And that one wasn't even really circumvention. It's just the way the tables turn because Patrick Kane legitimately got injured. So if you're in a position where you had yourselves the opportunity to say, okay, even without Kucherov, we'll probably make the playoffs because we're just that darn good. I don't fault the Tampa Bay Lightning for going out there and using the rulebook to their advantage, saying, all right, our $9 million player is not going to count anymore. Give us $5 million extra worth of players, and we'll play our $9 million guy back when the playoffs come, because that's when he's going to be ready. And now you see how things have worked out. Nikita Kucherov is at 27 points in 18 games played. He's an absolute madman, and it's not even close. And now the Montreal Canadiens are going out there as a team that is redefining the way that we're thinking about hockey and building a championship contender. There's a really good video on Coach Ryan D's channel. He's been talking about the Canadians and breaking down their systems, what exactly they're doing right and how they're doing it. I'll leave a link in the description to that video, breaking down the Canadians and their overall trap and why it works so well. But all of a sudden, the Canadians are going to have to start using this trap against what is probably the best team they've played in like a full calendar year in a bit. The last time the Canadians played the Lightning, it was on March 5th, and they lost 4 nothing. The time before that, January 2nd, the Lightning won 2-1. to The time before that, it was December 28th, the Lightning won 5-4. to In fact, the last 13 meetings between the Canadians and the Tampa Bay Lightning, the Lightning have only lost twice, and once was in a shootout. Now, granted, two of their wins were in shootouts as well, but that's besides the point. The Lightning have a very solid record against Montreal. Now, Montreal, they're playing a lot different hockey than the Canadians in the regular season, especially back then, had been playing. This Canadiens team is exhibiting everything that it is that Marc Bergevin wanted them to do. And now they're playing their biggest foe. The best team they've played in a long time. This team's better than Toronto. They're better than Winnipeg. They're better than Vegas. They're better than the Ottawa Senators team that kept on beating the Habs this season. This Tampa Bay Lightning team is all up in there with full intention of trying to win it once more. And all the stuff that we have to say about the salary cap, they don't care because they had it happen to them in 2015. So, Julien Brisebois, good on him for doing his thing. Tampa Bay Lightning, good on you guys for making it this far, but man... I don't want to see anybody going out there and saying that the Canadians don't belong here anymore. Because they kind of do. And now we will see the matchup between an unstoppable force and an immovable object. Montreal's penalty kill against Tampa Bay's power play. These two teams going out here with the complete dichotomy between them. Setting itself up for what is going to be a fantastic Stanley Cup Final Series. So talk to me in the comments what you think. I know I said I wouldn't make this video about the Habs, but I kind of had to. Either or, this video was mostly just talking about cap circumvention, the Islanders having their own problems to deal with, the myth that the Lightning are $18 million over the salary cap, and how it's kind of miscued in the wrong direction, how this entire thing has affected the Lightning before, and what the Canadians are going to go out there and be tasked to face. Talk to me in the comments what you think. I hope you enjoyed this Vinicius Rolls and Rolls on the I-9. Game 1's on Monday. We're going to be doing all the stuff that we normally do for that when it happens. And bye.